All right, so we are setting up our folders for our eventual keyframes. And right now we're just populating the folders with our sketch storyboard frames. So I've gotten through five of them. I'm at the half point now. And at any point, all animation is, is timed showing you of images, right? Sequential images. And the way we can imitate that is just by using the, the eyeballs in the layers. So I, I can at any time run a little quick test and just see by just turning on the layers. And I can see that the head's getting bigger and that these little changes are happening, right? Okay, so I'm five in, I have four more to go. I make a new folder on top of the existing folder. I go to my, my sketch, I use the rectangular marquee, I capture the next sketched frame. These are called keyframes. They're just not finished. They're just sketches. I hit Command-J on a Mac, Control-J on a PC to duplicate. And then I move it onto the folder and nest it in. I'm going to try to zoom in on this so you can see it. <laughs> so you grab the new layer that you made, and then you hover over the folder until it kind of compresses a little bit. And it's tricky. I'm, I'm using a trackpad, not a mouse, not a stylus. So if I drag it out of the folder, that's where I made the duplicate. And I might as well, I have to do this. I have to enlarge it so it fills the space. Just showing me the, the barest hints of its edges. And it's okay if you distort it, if you have to stretch it. And now I want to move that layer. So if your tools are ever really slow in Photopea, you can click on your browser window and then use Command Plus to zoom in. And that will zoom in on your tools. And then I drag up. I want to put this into the new folder. And so you'll see how the edges of the folders kind of dimple in a little. That's when you're over it and you can insert it. Okay. And then I'm going to rename the folder, which will stop the recording really quickly. But that's my process. Once I've inserted it, I then retitle the folder with just the number of the, of the keyframe. You do that by double clicking on the title and just typing it in. Oh good, it didn't stop recording. Okay. Now I'll zoom out again so the tools aren't so so huge. Because I want a lot of space eventually for working on my my stuff. And I create a new folder. Turn off the one I just made. Select the next window. I'm finally on to the bottom row here. And then move it onto that top folder. And then I can rename it. New folder. Go back to my sketch. So you can see why we had to do all those kind of compositing projects and really have a lot of experience working with layers before we could tackle animation, because animation is all about organizing. Knowing what you're looking at, knowing where it's what it's overlapping, knowing what's turned on and what's turned off. And so right now we're just creating the most basic animation. We're just animating our sketch. We're turning our sketch into a flipbook. And that's called an animatic. And that is professional practice, even for the highest 
highest paid, best creative digital studios out there. Pixar still does very basic pencil storyboard animatics before they commit to more finished work. And it's how you work out story beats and see if anything's going to need to be changed. Because animation is so labor intensive, the planning is necessary so you don't waste just a bunch of time and money on something that doesn't work. And people who really love animation professionally actually like the kind of professionalism of it, how regimented it is, how disciplined it is. And people who don't like animation, and I actually have to kind of put myself in that, in that category. I, I'm a great fan and consumer of animated media, but whenever I've had to make it, it just frustrates me no end. And it's because of all the repetition and all of the kind of arduous discipline it involves that turns me off. And so this is a good introduction to that. You'll learn that about yourself. Though I do like the end product. I like seeing my drawings come to life. But I've learned that if someone else wants me to do it for them, I can charge a lot of money. <laughs> it's, it's not something I usually do for fun. Okay. So now I have all nine frames in there. And I can do a really quick, you know, rough run through of what, what it will look like animated just by playing through the eyeballs. Oh, I missed one there. But if I really want to see how it works, I have to actually put it through another program to play it as a GIF. So before I do that, I'm going to save it. And now what I need to do is I need to save each of these nine keyframe sketch panels as a JPEG. So I have to say export as JPEG, save. Then I turn on the next one and I say export as JPEG, save. And because it's photo P, they're all going to have the same name, but different numbers after them. But, but then I'm going to rename those files. In Photoshop, you can say save as and give them each a new name. But the important thing is to export each of your folders individually as a JPEG. Wait, but this is an actual animation, right? We're, we're going to make an animation. What we're doing is we're outputting the, the individual animation frames right now. Even though it was drawn in pencil? Yeah, and this is what's called an animatic. So this is going to be an animated run-through, a rough draft of what we will then replace with our digital artwork. So the original is going to be drawn in vectors and stuff. I mean, the final is going to be drawn in vectors. Whoops. It can be done with vectors or, or raster, yeah. Mine's going to be a combination of both. Because I'm using a, my vector shape composition to start. Whoops. So it's a, another good reason to do this. I see that with layer 7, I never grew it. Even though I thought I was being pretty meticulous. So... This will help you catch little errors as well. That's weird. I didn't see that when I was running through. So there's lots of what are called animation tests. And this is what is traditionally called a pencil test, what we're going to be doing now. And this is a little tedious, you know, saving each one. I'm almost there. Exporting them each as a JPEG. They're all going to my downloads folder.
All right. So now when I look at my downloads, I should see <laughs> all in a different order, unfortunately, my frames. And some of them look the same. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, that's good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open that up and I'm going to organize them. Organizing your files. So important. So I have my assignment five folder here. I'm going to bring all of these JPEGs, not the PSDs. Bring all of those in to my assignment five folder. And it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I want to be really careful, I can rename them. But luckily, you know, just the naming that Photo P gave them is already in sequence. Oh, I'm missing nine though. Let's see. This one is nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so I'm going to put this as zero. So it shows up at the very beginning. So rename them if you need to. Make sure they show up in order. And then I might put them into their own folder, right? So I'm going to call these my pencil test frames. And animatics aren't always done in, in pencil. That's kind of the old method. They're often just drawn digitally now and composed quickly. And you're allowed to do that as well. But I'm going to take all nine of these frames. Move them into here so they're easy to find. Okay. Now I go back. I should make sure I save my PSD and I go back to Canvas because I need to get to the GIF Maker program. And that's linked in the instructions, gifmaker.me. So you click on that link and this is just a freeware or a free site where you can upload your images. So I click to upload my images, I open up my pencil tests. And I can select all of them. And even if they're not in order here, I have the chance to reorder them. So remember, each of these is a JPEG that's 8 inches by 8 inches by 72 pixels per inch. And they look to be in order. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them. And then I get to set the size. So this is at 100%. But I want to keep the size at 100% because then it won't distort the pixels, right? It will keep it at the resolution I brought it in, which is 8 inches by 8 inches at 72 pixels per inch. That just happens to be 576 pixels by 576 pixels. The next thing is the animation speed. So at 500 milliseconds, this might be a good, uh, like smooth animation rate, but right now it's maybe a little hard to tell what's happening. So I can slow it down, increase it to like one second per frame. For my animatic, maybe a little bit faster for mine, or you can go even slower. It depends how much time is passing between each of your keyframes, right? So that looks pretty good. And then if you keep it at zero for repeat, it's going to be an infinite loop. And we just want it always to repeat. Okay, and then we simply say, create GIF animation. We click there. And then we say, download the GIF. And then we'll see it in our downloads. And we have an animatic. 